So we are thrilled tonight to have internationally renowned and celebrated singer and actor Frank D'Ambrosio join us. He's best known around the world for his playing for many years the role of the Phantom in the Phantom of the Opera on Broadway, and also for his portrayal of Anthony Vito Corleone in The Grandfather Three. He has numerous awards and accolades that you can read about in your program, but we do have to mention that just last night, Frank was knighted by the order of the President of the Republic of Italy and his official title, Cavaliere dell'Ordine della Stella d'Italia, is the highest honor Italian government can give to a foreigner. So um, we're very thrilled that he's received this honor and that also his mother is here with him to celebrate him. In March, Frank will begin rehearsal for his staring role in the new house music opera Orpheus and the legendary New Vic Theater in London. Apart from all his accomplishments in uh, uh, music, in, uh, uh, Frank has become an example and an advocate for dyslexia, having struggled with dyslexia himself. He will become an inspiration, his success, his talent will become an, an inspiration for generations to come. And I'm so honored to invite him, Cavaliere Frank, Frank D'Ambrosio on the stage to join me for a conversation and then to sing two beautiful pieces for us. So thank you so much, Frank. I know you've had a super busy and exciting week, so thank, thank you. you for taking the time to My be pleasure. with us. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. How was it last night? It was, it was good. It was a lot of fun to, uh, at the consulate and uh, with uh, Lorenzo Torma. It was very nice. I was glad to have my mom to be with me and my, as well. Mom, want to wave? Yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> And uh, it was really good for, I was happy that my mom was here t tonight because, you know, growing up uh, in the 60s in the, and in the 70s, there wasn't a lot really known about dyslexia and, you know, and the families had to live through what that, what that was or in that, that type of an experience. So I think she get, it was a, a ability to allow my mom to, to see a little inside of my brain. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Wonderful. Um, so Frank, hearing the presentations tonight, and as um, Anne beautifully said, the superpowers that Virginia, for instance, has described, did you, did you recognize yourself in this emotional um, uh, reactivity and contagion almost that Virginia described? Oh yeah, <laughs> I was, I was, it was very interesting for me to kind of, because I was standing in the back before I went, to, and uh, to say, wow, yeah, I'm not alone, you know? Because you feel alone. You try to hide most of the time, you know? So. And how, um, how did dyslexia influence your learning uh, music? How did you become such an incredible performer and learn how to read music eventually? What was your experience with it? I had a very good memory. So I would memorize everything. And um, I have to learn, um, all, even still to this day, I have to learn all of my music in, le in levels. So I can't, uh, so what I'll do is I'll have, um, I'll have the, the words, um, let's say, let's say an, an aria or a song, I'll have everything read to me in rhythm. Have it read to me in rhythm. And then after that, I have them uh, read to me in rhythm, but have the pitches put underneath it. So I learn the and so I'm basically, I'm learning by um, first the, again, first the, the words with the rhythm, and then all of a sudden, then I get the, 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 the pitch is in the background somewhere, and then after that, I, then after that, it's just, then I just, I use, so it's basically, I use what they call plunk tapes, you know, because they're plunking your notes. Blum, 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 blum. And uh, so that's how I have to always learn, learn that stuff. As a matter of fact, um, I remember uh, my, my voice teacher, his name was Lorenzo Malfatti, and he said to me, he said, you know, Frank, when I finally learned how to teach you, 
you excelled. He, he said, uh, I guess he kept, so, and he said, and he remember talking to an, another guy who was uh, one of his students as well, who was a uh, Fulbright scholar, you know? And he said, this man, I, he's the smartest kid in the round this place. I, and I'm like, well, you know, thank you. He said, he learned an entire recital in one weekend. And I did. I had learned because he taught me, he taught me how to learn. Uh, so, um, and it was a, it was a recital of all, uh, uh, it was all, it was in full, it, all in, a, it was the regional dialects of Italy. So I sang, so it wasn't just in Italian, it was in all of the region, you know, as you can imagine, so. That, that's very difficult. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> just as, um, you know, as Anthony was saying, you know, we need to give credit to our teachers, right? And how is not, sometimes is not really that the dyslexic brain cannot learn, actually. I don't like the term learning disability because of that. It's not true that the, the dyslexic brain cannot learn, it just needs to learn differently. And so as Anthony and you were saying, finding the right teacher and training the right teachers is fundamental. Um, how about with your struggle with reading? How did you discover that? How did it first manifest? Well, when I was uh, very, very young, I, uh, like in the f first or second grade, they give you the, the tests, you know, the IQ test, and apparently I, I scored off the charts, right, Mom? I was like, they like called my mom, and they were like, they were like, well, this kid's gonna like be a rocket scientist until I got to second grade and you had to start reading. <laughs> And then they were like, well, what's wrong with that? And I remember, I remember it was the word serial that I couldn't tell. I still to this day, I can remember second grade. Uh, well, it was first grade, excuse me, first grade. Yeah, because as soon as they tested me, then they put me in the advanced, in the advanced side, yes. So it was first grade and it was serial. And it was second grade that I, I missed, that I, I failed out of the spelling because I couldn't spell water. So you, these are memories that stick with you. These are like, you know, right? It, it's yeah. imprints on you. So, um, and then they thought, well, maybe he's emotionally having a problem. Maybe what's this? And then, so then they left me back in third grade. And then finally by the t and then I went to Catholic school for one year, which was okay, you know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, and so I went up to the front of the class and they, you know, and of course, and, and you'll, everyone that's dyslexic here will, will, will get this one when they have you make you read out loud but like every person has a paragraph and there's always that one kid that wants to read two paragraphs <laughs> and you have not been listening to anything else because all you've been doing is counting the students into your paragraph and you've just been reading your paragraph and reading it over and over and over again because you when you had to see it out loud but then of course that one kid wanted who's a good reader wanted to read two and then all he's like oh shit <laughs> 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 yeah. And then you just got to, and then you have to read out loud, and you're like, and you can't, and you just, you can't, you just, it's hard to do. And so you didn't find out for a while as well. Fifth grade, actually, fifth grade, there was a, a, a and, but again, in fifth grade, it was, I was in 1972 in fifth grade, and it was a very young teacher uh, who was just, who had just come out of college and said, she had to my mom, said, I know what's going on with your son, he's dyslexic. And so then I was, because then, like you, I was able to read the, started to read the shapes of the words until, you know, I used to read, I remember, I would, I, I would read uh, uh, in a, par let's say in, in a doctor's office or whatever, and there would be, in New York, especially in the New York, there'd be a lot of uh, 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 um, magazines in Spanish, mm -hmm. and I would read a f a, all the way down to a, par in, halfway through the paragraph before I realized that it was actually in, la in another language. <laughs> Because I would just, all I would do is just continue to read until I found, I was so used to just reading until I found a word that, that I understood and then I looked for the next word that I understood and then I would try to put together what I thought the paragraph, what they were talking about. So, Again, this points to one of our important missions at the Dyslexia Center, which is to find early identification so that kids can be taught how to read early mm -hmm. and not spend all these years struggling and guessing. Um, and I was wondering, how did you find your music talent? How did that happen? Um, that's a good question. Um, I remember um, early on, my mom had me in uh, uh, guitar lessons, mm -hmm. and um, and I couldn't. And the the, the guy, the, the piano, uh, the, the guitar uh, gentleman said, "Your son needs glasses." 
And I and I and my mom was like, but he's got 20/20. She took me. He's got 20/20 vision. Still to this day, I have 20/20 vision. I really do. And so, um, and uh, but what was what it was is that I couldn't follow the line, the music line. You know, I was like, I was, I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't see where the dots were. And then, you know, if they would have said, if he would just would have said, well, this is a G7 chord, I'd be like, oh, mm. you know, because I can read G7, mm. but I can't read the notes that create the G7. So if you were to give advice to parents, I think many parents of dyslexic children have been kind of discouraged from having their kids do music because mm -hmm. reading sheets of music might be hard for them. So what kind of advice would you give on what is the best way to learn music for someone who learns language differently? Well, it, right, because it is a language difference, right? It is a, it's, it's a challenge in language, which is why it was very difficult for me to learn how to speak Italian, too. <laughs> you know, I still, you know. But you did it. But uh, Yeah, but it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, what um, I would say, well, I, everyone has to learn the way that they learn. They have to, to figure figure that one out. I mean, even still to this day, I'm learning this new score of this uh, an opera that I'm going to be doing. I think you mentioned it in, in London, mm -hmm. Orpheus, and I have and I have color coded my notes. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, that so that's so if it's in the key of C, I you know the C gets a certain color, and so then I just you know I you know uh, I, or at least I, I I find out what the tonic is. And figure out about that, and then also what I'll do since I still can't read across the uh, the page, um, I'll, I'll have if it's if the same notes or the, if I have like two notes that are or three notes, even four notes that that are the same, da, 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 I'll put a yellow line through all of those. So I'm like, oh, that's all one note. Mm -hmm. So I don't start you know composing in my brain, you know, because you can, right? So um, so I'm really careful, and that's how I have to do it. As a matter of fact, Stephanie Lynn Smith, who graduated from here, is, is the person who's been, uh, been teaching me uh, this particular score in order to do that, so. Great. Yeah. And do you think that learning by hearing and learning by feeling the, and hearing the, the music is important before learning how to read actually the music? Um, Would that? For, yeah, it's the words. The rhythm, the words, and and, and the, yes, and also for for me, it's very important for the punctuations as well. So I make sure where the punctuations are, so I know where my acting beats are, and that kind of thing as well. So, yeah. great. Well, thank you so much, You're Frank, welcome. for talking to us and for sharing your experience. As I was saying, your amazing talent and resilience will be example for for everybody in the audience and in the world. And we thank can't you. wait to hear you. Sing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.